Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with another MMATakeover.com interview. My name is Keith Schillen. Today's guest has a 6-1 MMA record and is on a six-fight winning streak and is making her UFC debut April 8th at UFC 210 in Buffalo, New York against Cynthia Calvillo. Ladies and gentlemen, Pearl Gonzalez. Pearl, how are you? Hi, guys. I am fabulous. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. Uh, no, we appreciate it. Uh, you're obviously making big news. Everyone wants to know who you are, making your debut, and I know you're really busy. Um, we're f- we are taping this. It is Wednesday, March 29th, so you're just a just over a week before your fight on uh, April 8th. So let's get right started. Uh, I always like to ask everyone: is how did they get into mixed martial arts? I got into mixed martial arts when I was 11 years old. My father at the time was raising me as a single parent, and I was. Uh, an angry child and getting into trouble. And so he needed something to keep me occupied while he was at work. And so he found a local MMA gym in Cicero, Illinois, and took me over there. And I hated it at first. I did not like it. I did not like to get hit. And after a couple months, I just remember a woman telling me, stop being so prissy, get tough. And I was like, I'm tough, I'm tough. And uh, from then on, I I just grew to love it and, and have been in the sport since yeah if you don't mind me asking how old are you now i am 30 years old 30 all right so you've been doing this for a long time now yes and and how many people are are telling you to get tough now Uh, not too many people yeah i think that i I do a good job of uh, (laughs) being tough when i need to be and and being feminine when i need to be as well yeah so uh tell us who you're training with and uh how's this camp going for this fight i train currently at Midwest Training Center. I am with Alex Trujillo uh, here in okay. Chicago or near Chicago. And uh, this is my home camp, my head coach. Um, I also live in San Diego currently. My husband is active duty Navy and we are stationed out in San Diego. So while I am out of camp, I train at 10th Planet San Diego. Okay. And then when you're in camp, you go back home and train with your team. Yes. Okay. Um, so we always do this question, and I was going to save this to the end. Um, we have a fan forum question, and I should have did some research because we tried it. We we always throw out a question, and say, "Hey guys, we always want the fans to ask a question." So this fan was coming. Uh, this question was coming from Tyler from Lansing, New York, and his question for you was, "Do you have a boyfriend?" Um, and so I am assuming the answer is no. You don't have a boyfriend. No, I don't have a okay. boyfriend. I have a sexy ass husband. Okay. So uh, t- I looked up before I checked it out because I, I looked up Lansing, and Lansing is not too far from Buffalo. It's a couple, uh, about an hour and a half or so of Buffalo. So I don't know if he was going to the fight, was hoping to meet you or something. So uh, poor Tyler, you're not. She's already taken. She's already spoken for. <laughs> and, and, and you said your your husband is in the military. Yes, my husband is in the Navy. The Navy. Okay. All right, so uh, when you when you talk to him, just say from everyone here at the MMA Takeover, thank him for his service, and obviously thank you, because you know as hard it is to be in the military, it's also hard on their spouses. So thank you for your service to our country too. Thank you, I appreciate that. So one question I got is, how come you don't have a nickname? You know, I don't know. Uh, we have never really come up with a good one or, or one to my liking. So. Okay. My name is unique as is, Pearl, Yeah. Uh, so I, I just keep it at Pearl. I just think that that's – I'm thinking people would use, you know, use the Pearl in your nickname or, you know. So let me ask you, Gonzalez, what, what nationality is that? I am actually Mexican, Mexican? Puerto Rican. I have a little bit of, of, of other things in me, but that is that is my base. I'm yeah. a variety pack, Latina. Yeah, the Mexican Pearl Gonzalez. Or something like that, you know. We, we, we'll throw yeah. that back out to the because the, the form <laughs> the form definitely let us down with the bad question. So we'll we'll throw that out. What should be your nickname? We'll throw that out there, and then I'll yeah. I'll uh, I'll yeah. reach out to you with it. All right. So um, so let's talk about. Let's get right into uh, UFC two ten. Um, you're six and one. Did you expect to get the call uh, for the UFC already? And um, how did the call come in? Yes, actually, I, I've been very focused. Uh, my coach and I have been working very hard and preparing and getting ready for the UFC. We actually got signed to the UFC back in December. Okay. Uh, I came back to Chicago once I was signed, as soon as I was signed, 
and I've been in fight camp training, preparing, um, and getting ready for my debut. So when we got the call a couple weeks ago about this fight, we were super excited and, and ready to go. Okay. Now, did they give you a date? Like, hey, we're going to have you fight here. Wait till we announce the opponent. Like, did you know that no, you're fighting? It, no, I did not. Uh, it was just kind of, we were just kind of waiting for that opportunity. And uh, Sean called us a, a few weeks ago and, and asked if we wanted this fight against Cynthia. And, and we, we said, absolutely. Okay. All right. Yeah, no, just because... Uh, you know, the the fight was only announced a couple of weeks ago, so I, I just assumed it was kind of one of these last notice fights. Um, so so let's talk about you know the debut in the, in the UFC. Have has any fighters uh who have already fought in the UFC? Have you reached out to any of them, or them reached out to you to kind of give you some advice, what to expect, um, how to mentally prepare for your, your debut? No, you know, I have, I have, uh, in San Diego, I, I have the opportunity to train with Liz Carmouche. I have okay. had that opportunity and, and, uh, been with her, been training with her for the last almost four years. So I have, I've watched her career. I, I've watched as the UFC's come in to record her. And she's always been like a mentor in that way, kind of giving me advice. Yeah. on you know what to expect while I'm when I get to the UFC so I, I've had her to look up to uh but I, other than that I haven't had too many other uh fighters reach out yeah I mean this is a girl that's ranked in the top 10 I mean it's, obviously she's a veteran of the sport she's been around for a while so it's probably the perfect person to get advice for especially a female fighter um so you kind of basically you've been getting advice for years now instead of just all of a sudden at once kind of thing yes Okay, so um, so my question is, this, being that it's your debut, you've you've fought in smaller organizations. There's not a lot of film on you. I mean, I'm trying to prepare for an interview, trying to get to know as much as I possibly can about you. I mean, I saw a couple highlight videos and stuff. So, for all those people wondering, like, hey, who's this Pro Gonzalez? Um, describe yourself to them. Describe you know what kind of fighter you are. To describe your strengths. I mean, if what you think your weaknesses are. Yeah, I think that I uh, have have been known early on in my career as a grappler, and and I've always favored the the grappling game. However, I have an amazing coach that has been working very hard to round out my game and uh, get me prepared and comfortable in all areas of the sport. If I had to choose where I would prefer the fight to be, it would probably be on the ground. But I've worked very hard on my striking and my stand up game. And uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to showing all areas of, of my skill. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's let's talk about your opponent. You're facing Cynthia Calvillo. I mean, she she's undefeated. She just fought at UFC 209 um, on the main card. She got a really impressive submission victory over Amanda Cooper. Really basically just uh, was a very one-sided fight. I'm not going to lie. Um, I just interviewed Josh Emmett and, and my question to him was like, wow, like how impressive is this girl? Um, so obviously I'm sure you've seen more film of her. Um, when you see her, what areas of strength do you see that, that you have to, um, be prepared for? And then on the flip side, what we, and obviously without giving away your strategy, what weaknesses do you think you can exploit? I think that she is an amazing, talented fighter. I watched her debut as well. I was equally impressed with it. I thought she looked great. You know, I thought she was very comfortable in, in the cage for it being her first first fight in the octagon. I think that she has a great grappling game, and she she you know was able to capitalize on some of the mistakes that ABC had made in that fight. And um, I think that you know she looks tough. She looks well rounded as well. Um, she doesn't look as as uh, comfortable, you know, on her striking as she does in her grappling. Um, she looks, you know, really aggressive, perhaps even a little emotional. And so, um, I, I don't know if those are her strengths or her weaknesses, but that is what I see, and that's how sure. I would describe her as a fighter. Yeah. Now, obviously, you've been training for a fight, but you haven't really had the chance to really train specifically for her. Um, so being that it's only a short time, is there any concerns just being in that, that, you know, normally a fighter gets eight weeks, 10 weeks, sometimes 12 weeks to prepare for someone? You're getting, you know, from when it got announced to the public, I don't know if it had any longer for you, but when it got announced to the public, it was only about two weeks ago. You know, is there any... Did you uh, let me so let me rephrase that question? Basically, did you have enough time to prepare specifically for her? 
Yes, absolutely. I think that we, again, have been working very hard, not just for the last couple months, but for the last few years at uh, preparing myself and, and for the best girls in the world. And so we, we've been on this, you know, pursuit of, of, of bettering every area and, and really exposing my weaknesses and, and, and helping strengthen those and strengthening my strengths. And so I, I am prepared. I'm well prepared for this fight. I've had a couple weeks I've been able to pull in. I've pulled in uh, an amazing uh, grappling girl, uh, four-time Pan Am champion, Taylor Biagi, who's wow. been working with me almost daily, um, helping me for this camp. I have another great training partner who was uh, a U.S. rugby player and also has phenomenal hands and a great boxer and has been really been able to help me, you know, with that and her grappling from her experience with her rugby. And so along with all of my training partners who are, you know, great wrestlers since they were three, four years old have been wrestling. Um, in Midwest, I'm very fortunate to have a lot of that here at my gym. And so I, I've had plenty of time to prepare for her. Um, and as well as just prepare for my debut, we, we never had an opponent. We were just getting ready and tightening up every area that needs to be tightened up. Okay. No, specifically, you think she probably go want to go to the ground. Um, being that you also have a background on the ground. Um, are you, are you, do you want it to go to the ground? Do you want to show how good you are on the ground? Or do you want to say, hey, I have the advantage on the feet. I want to keep it on the feet. I want to beat her up on the feet. I want to show that I am a well-rounded fighter. I am prepared in every scenario that this fight can possibly go to. It could be the worst scenario. It could be the best scenario for me. I am well-prepared for wherever this goes. And, and I'm ready and, and, and want to show the world just how talented I am. Yeah. Now I'm I'm super excited for this fight. I think it's a pretty good card. Um, I'm actually going to be there live. I'm driving up from Rhode Island, um, so I'm super excited. And now this fight gets announced, like you said, it only got announced a couple weeks ago, and it got thrown right on the pay per view portion of the card. Now tell me, how excited are you to have the opportunity to be on a pay per view? Because a lot of times, when someone's making their debut, they might be on a fight pass where you know only hardcore fans are watching or even on a Fox sports, but you're getting thrown right into the main thing. Like how excited are you for that opportunity? Oh my gosh. I am so excited. I'm so grateful for this opportunity. You know, I have been dreaming of being on, on a big stage like this for years. I would say 10 years ago, even before, you know, it was even possible for women to be in the UFC. I've always imagined that, that I would get to this level the world on the main card is literally a dream come true for me. I am so excited. I'm so ready again to show the world how talented I am. So, um, what would you, what would a win over Cynthia do for your career? I'm sorry. Can you repeat the question? I'm sorry. I said, so my question was, is obviously this would be the biggest win in your career. What would you say that a win over her would do for your career? I think that, uh, the win over, Cynthia is going to show that that I I belong in this in this division and and to be titled as one of the, one of the best girls in the world. I've worked very hard to get to this level, and I'm going to prove that this is right where I belong. Okay, so um, bearing any injuries, you come out unscathed, you get the victory. Do you have an idea when you'd like to fight again? And also, I mean, a lot of times people they get in the post fight interview with Joe Rogan and they start calling out people is. Anybody on your radar that you say, hey, I want, you know, A, B, and C? Yeah, any, any plans for that? No, you know, I I don't have any specific person I'd like to fight. I think that I respect all of the women in this division. I, I truly look up to them, and I really do want to test my skills and myself against the best women in the world. Um, as far as when my next fight would be, I'm not quite sure. Right now, I'm focused on one task, and, and that task is to win on April yeah. 8th. Okay, so let me ask you a question. So, you know, you know, you talked about watching Cynthia fight before. So you're at home, you're watching fights. Someone's in your division. Are you watching the fights, just enjoying it like the rest of us are, or are you trying to like study the people in your division? I think that I, I try to watch all MMA and and study and, and watch. You know what works, what doesn't work. You know how did mm -hmm. they, how did that work? Especially the women. I love the women there. They're so exciting. And so, yes, I, I've been watching strawweight division as, as long as it's been in here. I, I've known that I would be there one day and uh, have been watching these women. 
All right, so you're, I mean, obviously you're a fan of MMA. You're talking about watching all the fans. Is, is there a fight that night that, besides your fight, that you're really excited about to, to get the opportunity to see live? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I want to see the Musasi and Weidman fight. Yeah. Yeah, that's I'm excited about now, that one. That's going to be right after yours, right? Yes. Oh, so that so you might not be able to see it. You might be, no, you know, celebrating. Hopefully, but I'm excited for it. Yeah. Do you have a prediction? I think Musasi is going to win. I love them both, but I do think Musasi is going to win. Okay. All right. So let's talk about the main event. I mean, uh, that's another fantastic fight. Obviously, rematch. Daniel Cormier defending his UFC light heavyweight title against Anthony Rumble Johnson. Do you have a prediction for that fight? I think DC is going to take that one home. Okay. All right. So you, so you got DC defending his belt, and you got uh, Musasi uh, beating the former middleweight champion Chris Weidman. So let's uh, let's. I want to talk about a, a pretty controversial topic when it comes to women's MMA. Um, it comes in the marketing sense of women's MMA. Um, obviously, the majority of fans of mixed martial arts, and obviously I'm going to stereotype for a second, but the majority of fans are are men. And and right. of course, men are attracted to uh, women who are attractive. You know, they, they they Ronda Rousey obviously was a huge star because she was a killer, and, and she still could be a killer. But but also her beauty um, helped her get movies, helped her get a little more marketing. There's been a lot of women who embrace that side. You know, a Ronda Rousey, a Paige Van Zandt, a Misha Tate, they embrace that, that like showing off, hey, hey, I got all these skills, but hey, listen, I'm just not, you know, I'm not just a a killer. I'm also like this beautiful girl. I'm a, you know, a great athlete who's also good looking. Um, there's other women who kind of shy away from that. Like, for example, Rose Namajunas, I mean, she shaved her head on purpose saying, hey, th- you know, this isn't a beauty contest. I want to be known for my skills, not not for my looks. Now, you yourself and is a very attractive woman. Which side of the aisle do you do you like that fact that women are getting pushed because of their sexuality? Or is that like, hey, this is a sport. I should I want to be known strictly for my skills. I think I've worked very hard to balance that out. I, I do love being a woman and being beautiful and I embrace that side of, of it, but I also take my career and, and my um fight game very serious. This is this is my life. You know, I've been fighting to survive my entire life and so it, to me it's just as important um for for myself to be equally beautiful and as well technical okay so you got to kind of balance the two out and obviously you got the looks they're going to want to push you for the looks but also you got you have to you know the girls that have the looks have to have the skill too because if not i mean there's a lot right. of good looking women that obviously can't make it to the level you're at so i don't want anybody to think that i'm saying the reason why you're in this opportunity is because you're a pretty woman i don't i don't believe that at all um so let's let's talk about you personally because a lot of people um we kind of got to know the fighter now we want to i want to talk about the person um you have a pretty amazing story. You're from Chicago. Um, you're from the rough area of Chicago, um, which is one of the toughest areas in the entire United States. Um, you've told, talked about growing up with your parents. Uh, you spoke that both your parents were drug addicts when you were a young child. Um, if you mind me asking, how difficult was it to grow up at a young age with two parents that were addicted to drugs? It was extremely tough, you know. Uh, both of my parents were addicted to drugs. Um, I was kind of born into it, and, you know, as a baby, they they were homeless. And uh, so for a long time as a child, I don't – I didn't understand. I didn't quite understand, and, and I just kind of lived it, right, and had to be faced with these challenges that I could not control. Yeah. And so growing up um, – my father got clean uh, uh, before my mother did, and so I, I kind of was bounced around between family members. We had been taken from from my parents from the state. Uh, yeah. The state had taken us away, so we got put into, you know, with our family. And so um, being bounced around and then being split up by my well, my sisters and I were all split up. Okay. Um, my father finally kind of got it together and was ready to take care of me when I was nine years old. And so by this time, I'm already a very angry child. I don't quite understand why, um, you know, I'm not living with my sisters and my mom. And uh, so that was kind of why my dad put me into fighting, because I was always looking 
for acceptance, looking for that void that I had. Yeah. And so it was extremely tough, you know, especially growing up, not quite understanding my emotions. And today, though, I will say that I am very grateful for everything that I've gone through. I think that being dealt with all of these challenges, I could have easily became a victim and, and just became another statistic like sure. everybody in my neighborhood, yeah. you know. Yeah. And and instead of that, I've, I've used that to as fire and, and, and to show or approve that I don't want to be like that, that, that yes, my life was shitty. And yes, I was dealt with a lot of challenges, but I can, I, I don't, I love challenges. Bring me challenges. Like I'm just going to conquer them. I'm just going to bar- run through the doors that have been closed on me. And so because of my lifestyle, you know, I, I'm such a strong person and my family is still there. Unfortunately, you know, um, 95% of them are still on drugs or in yeah. some kind of tough situation. And so today I, I do this for my nieces. I do this for my cousins yeah. that are still living in that hell. You know, I'm, I'm here and I'm working so hard to prove to them that it does not matter where you come from. It does not matter what you're being faced with. If you work hard, if you dream, if you stay focused, if you stay dedicated, you will make it. And and that is my, my um, motivation, my daily motivation is looking at them and being that example for them. Wow. That, that made, I get chills listening to that story, to be honest. It, it's a pretty amazing story. Um, if you don't mind me asking, uh, what drugs were your parents addicted to? They both were kind of opposite. My, my dad was addicted to heroin. My mom liked yeah. crack. So yeah. it, it was tough, you know. Um, but hey, they that though they had to go through that, and I had to watch that and experience that with them for me to be where I am today. Now, uh, how is your relationship with your parents? It's it's great. I love them to death. I was so close to my dad growing up. It was just sure. my my dad and I my most of my life, and so him and I have had a very, very good relation, very tight relationship. And my mom, you know, she, it took her a little bit of time when she was younger, but my mom is doing amazing right now. My mom's got a master's degree. She's actually raising my, my niece right now because my sister chose the same path as, oh, okay. as them. And so, um, she, I, I have a, a pretty close relationship to my family. Unfortunately, the job that I have requires me to be very selfish, and um, I, I have to stay focused on my goals and my dreams right now. And so I don't get to see my family a lot. I don't get to spend a lot of time with them. I'll talk to them here and there, but at the same time, there are some distractions there. So right now I'm focused on where I need to be yeah. focused on. Um and I don't want to pry too much into your personal life, um, but obviously you're saying your mother's clean now? Mm-hmm, yes. Okay. Um, if you don't mind me asking, how did she get clean? Did, was it a religious thing? Was it a um, rehab? Or, or I mean, what, what happened? Man, I, I tell my mom all the time she's a survivor. She's a, a better fighter than, I, than I'll ever be. She, you know, through trial and error, she went in and out of rehab, yeah. I think, 10 times before wow. she finally was like, I don't want this. And, you know, she's worked very hard to be where she is today. And, again, she got her master's degree. She works at a, a rehab facility herself. She's helping. She's raising my niece. And she's come such a long way. She goes to the uh, women's prison in uh, Wisconsin is where she lives, goes to the women's prison and talks to them and has and hosts an AA meeting weekly. She's come a long way. And um, I think it was just, you know, it was her will that wanted to survive. And uh, I come from a family of survivors and I'm very grateful for that. Well, yeah, I mean, it's a really incredible story. And I think you're sharing that. I mean, it takes a lot for someone to share their upbringing, especially with someone they don't know. I mean, you don't know me. Um, you don't know our listeners. Um, but I'm glad that, that we get to know you a little bit now. Um, so obviously you talked about being an example, being an example to uh, nieces and nephews and cousins and, and people in your just your community in general in the rough areas of Chicago. Um, have pe- people reached out to you yet telling you that they – relate to your story Cause, or even more so now that you're in the UFC obviously your profile has just skyrocketed even bigger um i'm assuming that you want this to be an example and you want people to reach out to you and let you know and and kind of get advice from you and things like that 
I do. I I have throughout my career always gone back to my high school. I've I've talked to the kids there. I've gone to several schools, and 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 I've also mentored you know several girls. Just this year, actually, um, I was I, I had an injury, and so I had my niece uh, or my little cousin, excuse me, come out and who is involved in or lives in that hell that I come from, and I had her come out, and uh, you know she was having a tough time in school and. And uh, getting tough, getting bad grades, and reading level was so like, you know, she's sixth grade at a third grade reading level, and so she came out, and I, I had her stay with me for a couple months, and we worked very hard. She came back to school. She's got all A's and B's. She's got her reading level back up to a sixth grade, and very positive now, and focused on whatever you know her goals are right now. She's doing volleyball and dance. And uh, the teacher told her mom, I don't know what you did, but this she's made a 360. Wow, and to me, that, that is what I live for, is is to be that example, that little bit of hope to share with them, you know, the power of positivity, the power of dreaming. And, um, you know, a couple of weeks ago before this fight, I had my cousin, my little cousins all come over and we, I helped them make focus boards and I taught them how to set a goal. And you, you look at this focus board and, and you, you know, focus on this and, and these, these goals will come true. And it's so cute. My seven-year-old cousin calls me, and she's like, "I got this. It was on my focus board. It was on my focus board." And you know, that's that makes that warms my heart because that is our future. That is our yeah. future in our family. So if I can just show just a little bit to them or to anybody, you know, and just to give them that little bit, that really is what I live for. So I mean, I know you're striving to become a UFC champion, but even more important, you're already a champion in life that you've overcome so many things and you're helping other people overcome and that's what's even more important about being a, a athlete is to be an example and that's fantastic and i know for all the listeners uh, we're really glad that you were able to do that um so before i let you get out of here um you've already predicted musasi over wyman you've already predicted um dc keeps his belt so let's hear what your official prediction for your fight my fight. I do not know whether it's going to end in the first round, whether it's going to end in the third round. I don't know where it's going to end. I know one thing for a fact is my hand will be raised at the end of this fight. Okay, there you have it. Everyone listening at home, make sure you, from from Pearl herself, make sure you parlay her, Musasi, and, and DC. Put it all in a big parlay, and you'll have a big payday, according to her. If not, you can come track her down. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate you taking the time speaking with us. Um, honestly, I, I really enjoyed myself. You have an amazing story, and, and we really appreciate you taking the time to speak with us. My very last question to you is, have you submitted to the takeover? Pearl Gonzalez has submitted to the takeover. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that was our exclusive interview with Pearl Gonzalez. Uh, we thank you for your, for spending time with us, and welcome to the MMA Takeover family, Pearl. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me on. It was a, a pleasure to, to be on your show. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Pro Gonzalez. Make sure you check out her fight at UFC 210 on April 8th against Cynthia Calvallo. And ladies and gentlemen, to receive the best coverage in MMA, head over to our website, themmatakeover.com. That's the, T-H-E, MMATakeover.com. You can also follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Thanks for listening.